Thank you for joining our next session here um, called How Can Bias Influence the Usage of Biometrics? Anyone who follows the biometric space closely understands the, the threat and the important, importance of managing bias. So here to present today is uh, Joel Damano uh, from Feem. Uh, Joel has over 17 years experience in payment certification, having joined Feem in 2006. He specializes in biometric authentication and has participated in FIDO Alliance and ISO working groups. Um, so as a reminder, again, for everyone in the audience, uh, please take a moment to check into the event. If you have, uh, to this session, if you have questions, please ask your questions through the app, and that way we'll queue them up and ask them towards the end of this block. So with that, I'm happy to turn things over to Joel. Thank you. Thank you. So to, to start, I propose to start, to start with a, a story for the, from the laboratory of FIM. Uh, at FIM, we are um, providing a support to our customer for an uh, electronic secure transaction in different uh, uh, parts, and one of the parts is biometrics. And uh, through our uh, consulting team or our lab, we are helping customers to, to secure and have a good products. And what I uh, would like to share with you is, is a lab story for a, uh, a customer we had, and there is a story linked to the, to the bias. So it starts with a, a request. It's a customer who asked us for a presentation attack detection evaluations. It was for QA, uh, quality assessment. He wanted to know if his product was quite good or not. So we asked, the modality is special. We say, okay, so as usual, we try to, to, to define the scope. Uh, we, we, we prepare the, the, the lab. And you see here, we have defined uh, dif uh, different uh, category, demographic groups. We have prepared uh, gender, ethnicity, and we have prepared um, the, the spoof. So spoof is some um, presentation attack instrument. And for facial, you see, we have a list of level A, level B, with a paper mask. Sometimes it's, it's, uh, it's um, uh, displayed on the screen. So we have the screen, we have a Pepakura, uh, we have diff different kind of uh, uh, attack instruments. We prepared these, we are ready, and we start the, the evaluations. So as usual. And these are the results. So what do you think about these uh, results? You will say, wow, one PI, so the, the, the number five, has a quite high uh, score. You see, 14% of the, the mask, we can say, we present to the system. The system uh, thought it was a genuine people. So in the globality, the product was quite resistant, but there is some problem on the one, one uh, presentation attack instrument. So we said, OK. It can be stopped like this. Maybe on the globality, it could pass. But we wanted to, to support the customer to really understand why. Why this specific PI has this bad result? Where is the root cause? Can we, can we find something? So we go deeper, and we check, OK, we know that this pay presentation attack instrument has some vulnerability for your product. What if we uh, sort the, the attack not by the, kind of, uh, uh, the type of mask, but the type of person? And we calculate for each person the, uh, the, the attack presentation classification error rate. And we found that there is some, the, some people on the, on, the, on the subject used for the test where their, their, um, their mask was accepted more than other people. And what they have in common, their skin tones. And we say, OK, oh, we, we may have something. We need to go further to, to support the customer. So let's go back with some definitions uh, just before continuing the, the story. So what we call uh, bias is the differentials we can have uh, for the demographic subgroup. It means that we calculate the metrics for evaluation of uh, systems, but not for the totality of the subject, but we, we make groups and we calculate the rates for each uh, group. And sometimes we have a, a bad result for just a specific groups. And the reason, reasons can be uh, multiples, can be uh, uh, on the training data set of the customer, there is a lack of some specificities. Uh, there is some potential issue with the quality of the, of the sensor, there are many possibilities. And uh, after, yes, you see the, here the, the phenotypes. 
which is the characteristic of a living, can be the hair, the eyes, the, the weight, the skin tones, many things we can uh, think to, to create uh, groups and uh, to create demographic groups. So let's continue. And to, to, to let you have an idea about uh, how lab is working, uh, we can have a little tour uh, of the lab. So let's go. So here, welcome on the, one of the biometric testing room. You, you see there is lots of light control, and we can control the environmental conditions uh, to, to, to check all the power of the light, the color of the light, many things to reproduce the final environment where the product will be deployed. And it's very important sometimes we, we found the lab found vulner vulnerabilities when there is a specific uh, uh, light which will be, uh, in reality, you, we will have the same light. So you see here, you see we have uh, some, uh, some mask, a 3D printed mask, for example. And uh, this is an example where the, the product tested was a, a mobile phone. We put a mobile phone and we, we have different uh, attack instruments. So you see here is a, a mobile a photo on the mobile phone. It can be a pepakura. So you see here, um, it's a pepakura. In fact, it's took from one or two images. Then the, the engineers at the lab uh, create um, a 3D image from uh, two, two image, they, they, they create a, a 3D. Uh, and for, for, from this, they, they create um, each square, each uh, triangle to, to make this kind of uh, shape. And then we print, and then it's like a puzzle, and you need to, to put glue, and to, it's like a, like a, a game. And uh, we spent around uh, one, one day for, uh, for, do, for having this kind of uh, mask. And it's important to, to know the time spent because this helps to characterize the level of the, of the, of the spoof. And, and uh, as a lab, we, we like repeatability. And as in biometric, it's very, very difficult to have repeatability because we deal with uh, humans. Uh, so to, to, to help, we have developed a robot. And we can, with the robot, uh, have a specific uh, distance, angles, uh, speed of approach. We can, uh, we can do more repeatable uh, approach and, and test. And we are using different uh, um, faces, for example. And it, what is good is we can group faces by the, uh, demographics. We can check specific ethnicities or skin tones or uh, many things we can group uh, when we do the, the testing. So le let's come back to, the, to the, the story. So the customer had an issue with the product, and it's linked to, we found skin tones, uh, ethnicity. So we have a solution. We can hire uh, 20 people from these skin, skin tones, another 20 people for other, and so on. It will take time. It will be a high cost for customer. And we thought we can maybe find a solution with artificial intelligence. And we have, uh, uh, currently, we have uh, four PhDs uh, at FIM for the research. And we have some, uh, some solutions. And we have um, thought that we can create, by artificial intelligence, different uh, synthesized faces with specific skin tones. And we have created groups like this. So it won't be OK for an official evaluation, but it's OK to help to analyze and find how we can help the customer on the debug, on the quality assurance. So we have created the different uh, groups. You see here, uh, Monk 5, uh, Monk 7 is a, a scaling for uh, skin tones. And we are used these synthesized artificial intelligence-based uh, uh, faces to, do the, to, to test the product. And these are the results. Ethnicity 1, the, the suspected uh, bias, we found, you see, close to 30% of uh, the mask accepted instead of rejecting. It, it's, quite, it's very huge. You, you mean if this is deployed on this specific country, this means that it's a, it's, a very, uh, secure, it's a high security issue, in fact. Even if globally the product is good, but if it's deployed on this country, it, it will be a, a, a big problem. And you see, on the other ethnicity, perfect. The product is, uh, is very, very good. So we, we, we provide this to, to the customer. And the customer found the reason. In fact, this specific skin tone was, does not, did not appear on his training data set. So he found this. 
He updated his training data set. He redo the test. But we redo the test. <laughs> Read the test, and we found this is the, the, the final table, and we see this is, this is quite good, this is better. So with this, it was uh, good for the customer to avoid some uh, issues on the field, some bias issues or differential uh, issues. So you see, it's, it's very important to, to, to find which bias could exist on the product. But you could ask which factor could impact in negative way the, the biometric system. So there is many. Uh, this list is not uh, exhaustive. You see, there is demographics, as we, we discuss, and, and it can be also not, it can be age. It can be also uh, uh, skin disease. It's very important to have uh, inclusivity in biometrics, and it's bad if a part of the population cannot access to the system because of a, a health issue, for example. And you see, we have other factors which can uh, impact. We have the environmental conditions, uh, the, the positions uh, of the, uh, when we do the, the approach, the accessories also, uh, and the capture device. Uh, there is a screen protection, ma many things, in fact. Uh, so it's, it's very important to, to, to try to, to target and to highlight which factors could impact the, the, the final result. This is an example of potential bias or differential per modality. And you see it's, it's very different following uh, which uh, modality. So we have facial, it can be uh, uh, gender, disability, ages. Fingerprints can be the, the, the skin dryness, uh, the, the scratches we could have. Uh, many things. For example, if you are a manual worker, your fingerprint won't be the same as someone who is, uh, is doing uh, uh, all his days without using his hands. Uh, voice could be the regional tones. Uh, iris, there is also things with the color of eyes, some sickness also possible. So many things who can uh, bias the, the, the final result. So what could we do? We, can, we could continue to improve the way we are uh, doing the, the evaluations and find uh, uh, good solutions to highlight the, the risk. So, Let's continue with another story. So this time is not from the lab, it's from the research. And this is a, a film research paper we have done um, some, uh, some years ago, it was two, in 2021. And the idea was to check the impact of the environmental conditions for the fingerprint system, for the, the performance of the fingerprints. So what, what we have done, uh, at the lab, we have climatic chamber. And we say, okay, let's use them. So we ask people uh, to, to do collections. So they put their hands on the wall, you see, on the, on the climatic chamber. And we try uh, by which we unroll their fingers and we do verification of their fingers. We have tested uh, six different environmental conditions, which could represent uh, six real conditions uh, on the world, on the planet we could have. And we have tested uh, three different algorithms on all the images captured. And we had around 1,000 of uh, images captured. And we have found uh, interesting results. In fact, on the three algorithms, two were stable and one was not stable. If we unroll on one specific condition and then we try a verification in another condition, the result was very bad. If we try to verify on the same condition as the enrollment, the result was good. This means that if you enroll at the bank or uh, at home, and then you try to, to unlock outside, you may have trouble. So it's, it's, uh, it's, it was very interesting to, to show this, uh, this aspect. And some, some months ago, it's, it, yes, it's around it's, uh, this summer, we, we, we thought as we keep the result for, uh, for three years, we, we still have the, the data, and we thought, what could we investigate more on this related to differentials? And we thought, okay, we may try to recalculate the performance by demographic groups on the different factors of uh, different environmental conditions. And these are the results. You see, we check with three different environmental conditions for humidity, 80%, 50% of humidity, 
and 20% of humidity. We, do, we did two groups, male and female, for the gender. You see the two curves, there is the, the blue and the, the red one. For the 80% is exactly the same. So this is a, this is a rock uh, curve, and the idea here is uh, the, the highest the curve is, the better is. So 80% we have the same. 50%, it's, it's not as good as 80, but it's uh, the, the same. But 20%, you see the, fi the female is lower than the male. So this means that sometimes, even if you do demographic groups, globally it can be good, but if you uh, differentiate more by some uh, additional groups, like for uh, humidity, for example, you, ca you can find that for a specific environmental conditions, some bias can appear. So we are working on this, and we are trying to investigate why uh, there is this uh, difference. So uh, we have read some um, scientific paper showing that the density of the ridge is not the same between uh, male and female for some ethnicities. If, is this, if there is another cross reason, so we are working on, on this uh, uh, to, to find a, a thing, the reason. But it was very interesting, we thought that uh, sometimes uh, specific environmental conditions can highlight, push uh, a bias which could not be visible on other environmental conditions. So you see, bias and differential can be very uh, everywhere. And now, last, uh, last story, the, the third one, is another uh, uh, scientific paper. And this one, we have done it in October, so it's a very, uh, very recent. Uh, we have published this and uh, presented on the, um, on the conference in, uh, for the cyber world in SUS uh, early October. It was uh, Abda who, who did this. And the, the, the theme was capture bias in fingerprint systems. Uh, so uh, all the scientific papers you, you can, uh, we have done at FIM, you can see uh, on uh, Google Scholar, and uh, don't hesitate also to, to go on the FIM website. You have some scientific paper and also some blog to explain uh, the, the papers. The idea was to, to check the existence of uh, differentials uh, for the ca capturing of fingerprint systems, and we have created different data set, database, with different uh, quality of the image, so people which could have very good, good uh, uh, minutiae and other with a kind of uh, scratches or uh, missing a part or, or simulating uh, like uh, the, a manual worker, or something like this. Uh, and we have tested two uh, algorithms and we found that one was quite stable and the other was not uh, stable. So uh, you see uh, on the image there is a different example of quality of fingerprints. And after, on the curves, you, you see that uh, there is a, uh, a decrease of the, of the quality and on the decrease of the result following the, the, the quality. And the second algorithm was not like this. It was quite stable. So this means that uh, if you evaluate with people who have good fingerprints, you can claim, ah, oh, my product is very good. But what will happen? If it's deployed on some regions where it's quite cold, and on the winter the fingerprints can be fingers can be dry, and the quality can be worse, and maybe the result won't be the same. Or if you are someone who is doing a, a climbing or a, a something with horses, uh, if there is some uh, erosions of fingerprints, maybe some algorithm can be very good, and other uh, not not as good as this. So this is, this is why, by the way, when we are doing collections um, and evaluation at FIM, we ask people uh, if they are doing on their uh, hobbies or day-to-day uh, -day life some activity which uh, impact their fingerprints. So you see here, by doing this kind of evaluation to focus on BIAS, we can uh, prevent some risk prior to the deployment of the product. And this is uh, the, the, the ID. So, to, 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 to finish, and this is the, the last slide, uh, the question is how minimizing the potential bias uh, impact on the product? What we see, there is uh, four possibilities of uh, actions. 
and it's all along the life of the, of the product, of the development. It's not only at the end during the evaluations. We need to, to, to start working at the beginning. And the beginning is the definition uh, of the product. And here it's good to, at the beginning, to think about the deployment directly uh, uh, from the beginning. And one, one document, for example, is the FIDO allow integration document, where you, you need to define the modality and where we deployed, what will be the final uh, environment. And it's good to, to start thinking at the beginning of the project, to think of the, the, the conditions. And then, when we design the product, it's good to, uh, uh, to have, for example, a training set, if you use artificial intelligence, which use um, all the demographic groups you will encounter on your uh, deployment. So it's good to, to take time to, 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 not, uh, to, to, to have a, a very good database to avoid biases. Also to, to check how your product will uh, behave when it will have different quality uh, of uh, images. If it's facial, what's happened in low light or with very uh, backlight, for example? If it's sound, what's happened if it's a very noisy environment? or very calm environment. Uh, we, uh, that, by the way, is it the same threshold, or will you use two threshold? Uh, this, this, uh, this is very important to, to think uh, at this stage. Then is delivering. When you deliver the product, prior to, to, to deliver it, it's good to evaluate. And prior to official evaluation, it's good to do some Q, QA, quality assessment, some debug, to check if there is a, some uh, biases and to, to, to do an evaluation. We can uh, check the false negative differential, for, uh, for example. And the last part is the, the final test evaluations to ensure trust on the product. And this, how to, 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 to improve, is what FIDO is doing with the working groups. And there is a good advancement on the working groups to, 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 to continue to move on the methodology and to find ways to always uh, find evaluations method to, to put more and more trust on the product. So it's, a, it's by doing all the actions on these uh, four steps that we could uh, help to avoid, even if there will be bias, it, it will be, uh, it will be very difficult to have a bias-free bias system. But at least it's good to discover the vulnerability area and to fix it uh, prior to deployment. So thanks for your attention. Thank you so much. I think we have time for probably one question. Um, we'll see how quickly we answer it. So we have a couple in the queue. Um, well, for firms implementing biometric authentication solutions, is there anything we can do to minimize the risk of introducing bias? We kind of just went through that. But. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> the, the one point is when you, uh, is on the four steps, uh, pre, uh, specifically at the beginning. And uh, as we saw on the example for, from the customer, when you do your uh, uh, training data set, yeah. it's good to take time to really think about, uh, have you thought about all the kind of uh, factors which could uh, impact the, the final result. If, if you want to, if someone wants to have a, an idea what factors, we could see the, um, there is an, on the ISO uh, 19795 uh, Annex C, uh, a list of many factors we, which can be used when we think about the training data set. So, so uh, there is a related question here. How many subjects make up a typical training data set? And is that something your customer dictates, or is that something you guide them on, or are there standards for the size of a data set? So the, 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 the bigger data set, the better would be the, it yeah. is. Uh, at the evaluation part, we are following the rule of three of uh, ISO to evaluate the, okay. the number of subjects we need to do for evaluation. Okay. It's on the ISO, this one. We have one last question, and we have 30 seconds to answer it. Um, okay. Was FEM able to do testing during the pandemic? Ah. How did you do biometric testing during the pandemic? With the mask. <laughs> oh, with the mask. Okay. <laughs> no, no, yes, it, it, was, it was possible. Our, our team were on the, on the lab. Okay, very good. Um, well, thank you so much for the presentation. And so we will, uh, this wraps up this session. We will pick up here in around five minutes um, at 4.35 Pacific time. Thank you so much. Thank you.